don't see this often when a character like Shangling can do both jobs so easily. Not only is she a great damage dealer, she can also give some serious support with her elemental skills. The only question remains, how will you choose to build her? Although at first it might look like Shangling is destined to be someone who is only there to provide elemental reactions, she can also dish out some serious damage too. What's also intriguing about her is that currently she is the only polearm user in the game. Her attacks are a mix between a claymore and a sword, so you can expect to deal pretty big damage especially on the last two hits. And because her attacks are fast and involves more movement, her skills are designed in a way to assist her agile gameplay. What's also interesting is that her passive talents are focused around her companion Gooba with the final one unlocking the hot chili pepper which gets left behind after Gooba is done with setting everyone on fire. And this chili pepper can be picked up by anyone which is why she's amazing at support since you can provide your main damage dealer with an extra 10% increased attack. Another cool thing about her skill is that Gooba can be picked up by the traveler's vortex, essentially trapping everyone in a strong pyro and swirl elemental reaction. And whether you're using her for support or damage, you need to keep in mind that her pyronado reaches its maximum potential if you can hit the same enemy with it more than once. Each swing produces bigger damage, so moving around with her or anyone else who has Pyronado active can increase the damage potential. Essentially, her skills are designed to either assist her or anyone else who is on the field, but at the same time, she can also deal great damage with good mobility. When it comes to weapons, there's a number of options you should consider. If you're only interested in making her someone who's only there to support, then Halberd is an excellent option since the attack it provides will make her skills stronger. But if you're ready to make a bigger investment, you can also get the prototype grudge from the blacksmith. It will give a large energy recharge bonus, which means you'll be able to activate your pyronado more often. Although it's not recommended to refine the weapon since its only purpose is to create more bursts. Now, if you're interested in making her the ultimate damage dealer, you've got a few options. White Tassel and the same Halberd are great early investments for her since they both do what basically a weapon needs to do and that's to provide more damage. But what you're really going to be after is Crescent Pike. It's another weapon you can get from the blacksmith and it comes with some insane benefits. First of all, it provides the physical damage bonus, which is already an important thing to have for anyone who specializes in basic attacks, but then the true potential of the weapon shows up in the form of an extra attack. The only condition to start dealing these extra attacks is to be able to pick up an elemental particle or orb, which can be easily done by using your elemental skill or damaging your enemies. What's even crazier, because the attack you produce is independent, it can also be a critical hit. And just to remind you, this is a weapon you can get as a free-to-play player without the gacha and even get more copies from the weekly bosses. Moving over to artifacts, there's two sets you can keep your eye on when building her. The first one is the most universal and it's the gladiators set. Both set bonuses work really well for her, but if you get unlucky with the main stats, you can swap in any artifact to set bonus that provides extra damage. And if you focus purely on just increasing her attack, then it will benefit both her support and main damage dealer build. Although you will be missing out on elemental reaction damage if you do decide to neglect elemental mastery, but at least her skills will scale pretty well with her attack. Now if you want to make her become even more specialized with supporting your team, you can go for the Crimson Witch of the Flames set. This will put her skills on steroids, especially the force set bonus which will not only increase elemental reaction damage, Damage, but also further boost her pyro damage. Basically, if you want to make her the main damage dealer, focus on getting artifacts that increase her physical damage, basic attacks and attack overall, as well as keeping in mind that you will need critical hit and damage as well. And if you're interested into making her a godlike support, then obtain the Crimson Witch of the Flame set and get healthy amount of attack so your skills can scale appropriately. When you're building a team, Shangling is going to be an easy choice for many setups. For anyone who owns Deluke or the newly upcoming Klee, the activated elemental resonance of 25% increased attack will give a serious damage boost for the whole team. And even if you can just get one constellation activated, she can start reducing enemy pyro resistance with her elemental skill, which only makes your main pyro damage dealers even stronger. Not to mention on her last constellation she gives additional 15% pyro boost to damage. So while it's clear she's very easy to build together with any other pyro characters, she also works great with any other elements too. Any electro teammate like Fischl or Lisa will give a nice starter to activate overload reaction or you can also plug in a cryo user to go for the melt reaction. But if you're going to be using her as your main damage dealer, then anyone who has high elemental mastery can capitalize on any of her skills so she can create pyro status effect on enemies and then characters like Fischl can take advantage and create powerful overload reactions. A good rule of thumb is to 
always remember that if your character specializes in physical attacks, it's better to leave reactions for someone else with higher elemental mastery. There's a lot to love about Shangling. Probably the best thing about her is that she unlock her for free from the Spiral Abyss, so she's an easy choice for anyone who's a free-to-play player or is simply saving up their primo gems for future characters. She works really well in both her roles of being a support and damage dealer, but you will need to build her appropriately in order to get the best results. Her only drawback would be the weird positioning of her skills. Gooba can be easily left behind if you suddenly change your position or the enemy disengages, and the Pyronado sometimes is isn't easy to control if you have a lot of enemies to deal with. Nevertheless, she's an extremely rewarding character to play with and will make your journeys in Genshin Impact much easier. Except for when you're listening to that jingling bell for 6 hours straight. Enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon and gently press the like button. Don't forget to check out our other Genshin Impact guides which also includes a tier list that you can also visit on our website gachagamer.com. Thank you for watching us.